once I can remember myself, I was dancing. Whether the house was empty or filled with family and friends eating lunch, there I was dancing. So naturally, at the age of six, my mom took me to my first ballet class, which was also my last. I was there standing, doing the same movement of my leg for so long, I couldn't understand what was the connection between this movement and the dance I was doing at my home. In the end of the class, I ran to my mom crying, this is not dancing, the teacher ruined my dance. So I went back to my parents' living room and continued with my dance. Improvisation in movement, this is what I do all my life. And what is improvisation? Well, it's moving without planning ahead. If a dancer, for example, needs to remember his choreography and an actor remember the text, well, improvisation put us exposed. Just you as you are. That means you need to know yourself better. And if there's no planning ahead, well, improvisation teaches us how we make decision moment by moment. And there's many ways to do improvisation. All of you probably are doing it as well. The practice that I want to share with you today is being aware to every moment through your body. In the last few decades, we speak a lot about the connection and body of mind and how this connection can help us to grow and to have a better life, to connect to our uniqueness. But even with this awareness, we still mainly focus on the mind aspects, like positive thinking and coaching, and many other techniques, but yet the body we left behind. And it's okay if uh, some of you run twice a week or you're even aware of what you eat. This is good, but this is not what I'm talking about. This is still using the body for our mind and not using our body to improve our life. And after doing it for so many years in the studio, I saw that the same principle that I practice with people at the studio works as well outside. So I chose four principles out of ten to share it with you. So maybe you can practice it in your everyday life since your body is always with you, right? So the first principle is open your presence. If I will ask you a simple question like, how are you now? Probably most of you will give me a general answer like good or fine, maybe some of you tired a bit, but general answer. But if I will ask you how you feel your body right now, there will be a silence unless you have a pain somewhere. And this principle helps us to be aware of our body every moment. For example, when you sit now here and listen to me, how many of you are aware and feel your body right now. And if I will ask you without changing anything, just to pay attention, how is your head? Don't change anything, like you look at me straight or with an angle. And your legs are separate or crossed. And now try to feel your head and leg at the same time. You see, when we practice this at the studio, the first thing that we do when we enter, before we dance, we stand and we root it ourselves, we feel gravity. And then we open our senses, how we hear the sounds around us and how we look and observe in the space. And only after doing that, we are ready to start to move and communicate with others. A high-tech person who started dancing in my studio shared with me how he used this principle at his work when he had to go to conference and talk with new clients. He told me, you know, it was difficult for me to start conversation. So next conference, I enter the conference room, I look for a good place to stand. Then I rooted myself, opened my senses, made myself visible. And after a few moments, people start approaching me. If you, whenever you enter a room, or a new space, so will you stand just for a moment and feel yourself rooted? You will feel more present in your body, and when you are more present in your body, you will be more present in your life, and it will give you strength and power. The second principle is change it. We all have our ways of how we organize ourselves in the morning, right? Our routine, 
the way we brush our teeth and so on. And the improvisation gives us tools to look on a reality in a different way, to break patterns. By this, I don't mean that I push people to an extreme experiences. At the studio, we expand our comfort zone step by step. So I will not push you to any kind of big movement, not standing. Just ask you in a moment to wave goodbye to me. Wait, but don't leave the room yet, okay? Just so ready? Just wave goodbye, all of you. Oh, that's lovely. And stop. Thank you. <laughs> I will ask us to do it again in a moment, but this time we'll change one thing, okay? We'll do it very slow. Ready? Ready? Are you ready? Okay. So let's start. Do it really slow. Slow. Feel your elbow. If you can, look at your fingers. See the distance? And wave as slow as you can. It's a little bit like the queen, yeah? <laughs> and stop and take your head down. Head, uh, hand, sorry. Thank you. You see, this time, when we changed something, we felt different. We could notice things that we didn't notice before. A young student of mine who was oversized and a young mother, and she shared with me it was not so easy for her to get used to the possibility to go to the floor in the studio role and feel comfortable. But after a few months, she came and she told me, you know, yesterday I went back home, and instead of picking up my baby and walk with her in the house, I went down to the floor and play with her for the first time. Because when you do things differently, you can look differently at things, and things will start to change. And I want to offer you to choose one habit every week and do it a bit different. Like next time you drink your coffee, maybe you slow down. Feel the path of the cup to your mouth, smell it. Maybe it will even taste different. In order to break patterns, you don't have to change your life. It's enough to pay attention each time to one activity. It will keep you awake in your life, and it can be fun. The third one is break it. We all live in a hectic life. We run from many tasks, as we have so many things we need to do. How many of us, in the end of the day, saying, I'm exhausted? You're even exhausted now. <laughs> So, inside this principle, in this side, this break-in, we observe how much effort we really need for any activity that we do. Let's do a small experiment now. Can you take your hand, please, and create a fist? Now do it strong. And step by step, take the tension off, keeping the same shape, and see how much layers of tension you can take off without opening your hands. Thank you. So it's amazing to discover that we can do the same thing with less tension, and we all have a habit of working hard, and the tension in our body is enormous. In the studio, I encourage people that when they stop, then we are alert. So when we start to move, we do it like we're resting. And in this way, I encourage people to change our perception on working time and resting time. Can we go to work, do exactly the same thing, but with less tension? So when we rest, we will not collapse. There's many ways to practice this in the body, but I want to give you a tip of 20 seconds. Next time, maybe even today, when you enter home, instead of running out of the car, sit for 20 seconds in your car, breathe, you can feel your body again. In this way, you bring an end to one activity before moving to the next. And if you will do this movement of the shoulder, you can even do it now if you want, maybe to shake it up a bit, up and down a few times, and take it off. You feel much better and you will get more energy since it's like you do a restart to your body. And after practice this with myself and with others, I understand that the real challenge will be how this practice will help me with my communication, with my children, colleagues, family. So I would like to show you what happened when four people enter the space and practice communication through the body. At first, they will stand or sit and feel gravity. They open the senses to the space. It's a little bit like jazz musicians that tune their body, we tune our body 
through listening. Then they will start to play with changing space and time. They make decisions while moving. They try to be open to any result. Take the tension off. And then the movement vocabulary is open. And it's a little bit like a soccer game. There are rules, but still everything is open. And the main question that they ask is not only what I feel, what I need, but they practice to observe what the space needs now, what the group needs, and can I support it, join it, or start something new. It's okay. <laughs> what you saw here was a group improvisation. Like people do brainstorming, we do body storming together. And you can learn a lot from practice this. And after teaching this for 23 years, I saw how this work influenced people, not only in the studio, but at their home, at work, even walking on the street. And as a mother and an artist who live in a country that is in a state of conflict, that lack communication. I felt I had to do something. So in the last five years, I collaborate with an Arab choreographer and a teacher, Rabba Mokus. And together we create a workshops for Arab and Jews to meet together, to communicate, to build bridges without words. And after the war last summer, we decided to establish a youth group which will perform here soon on the stage. And we don't talk about our differences. We don't talk about tolerance or how we can live here together. We do it. We move, we touch, we open our bodies and hearts to be here together, to practice being here together. And when I see them laughing and hugging at the studio, I understand again that one honest meeting of our body worth thousands of words. You see, under your eyebrows, you have a body that has the power and knowledge to create a change. And it's possible, and everybody can do it. And you can start with one simple question. How you feel your body right now? Thank you.